Last week I shared with you some exercises regarding lower back pain and postural imbalances known as lower cross syndrome. This week I want to share with you some exercises that will help the upper back and postural imbalances that are known as upper cross syndrome. Hi, my name is Dr. Jeff Anderson. I'm a doctor of chiropractic and acupuncture in the Southwest Denver area. For over 22 years I've helped people minimize their pain and maximize their function. Today I have with me Ms. Tony Klein and she and I are going to share with you the exercises that help upper cross syndrome. But first, what is upper cross syndrome? By far one of the most common postural imbalances that I see in my office today is neck and upper back pain as a result of upper cross syndrome. Upper cross syndrome is a series of muscle imbalances that start in the neck and work its way into the upper back. This usually comes from prolonged sitting while driving, working on our computers, working on a tablet, or working on our cell phones. This Tony is going to demonstrate a typical posture that most people assume when working on their cell phone, and this is the common text neck that you see, which creates the upper cross syndrome. So while Miss Tony is working on her cell phone, a couple of things are happening here. Number one, her muscles in the neck, the anterior scaly muscles, start to pull too tight as her head pulls forward. As her arms and are, are internally rotated with the shoulders, it rounds the shoulders, causing tightness in the pectoral muscles and the upper trapezius muscles. As a result, the muscles that get weakened are the deep neck flexors right here, deeper to the anterior scalings, and these rhomboids, these scapular retractors right between the shoulder blades. This graphic demonstrates the cross links of muscular imbalance in upper cross syndrome. It shows weak cervical neck flexors combined with weak rhomboids and lower trapezius muscles in the upper back in conjunction with tight upper neck muscles in the suboccipitals and upper trapezius and pectoral muscles create rounded shoulders and a sloped neck. So how do we correct these muscular imbalances known as upper cross syndrome? First, we need to stretch the muscles that are pulling too tight. That includes the suboccipital muscles, the pectoral muscles, the upper trapezius muscles, and the SCM muscles. The muscles that we need to strengthen are the muscles that became inhibited. Those include the deep neck flexors, the lower trapezius, and the rhomboids. One of the first muscles that we want to stretch that is really tight is the suboccipital muscle. The suboccipital muscle is a muscle located very high up by the skull where it connects to the upper part of the neck. This muscle gets tight as the head rolls forward like this. The way to relax that muscle is the same way to strengthen these weakened deflexors, and that's by doing a neck retraction exercise or a chin tuck. Ms. Tony's going to demonstrate the chin tuck. It's basically half the chicken dance. We're going to take the head, make sure her eyes are level, and she's just going to pull her head straight back. This is going to line up the ears with the shoulder, and she's just going to hold that for maybe a breath or two, and then she's just going to come back and relax, and then she's going to come back. The keys to doing this exercise is to make sure that the eyes stay level, that allows the chin to stay level, and we're moving straight back. A great way to stretch the trapezius muscle, the SCM muscle, and the anterior scalene muscles is by doing a trapezius stretch by taking your hand, putting it over your head, pulling, and then extending with the other arm. Ms. Tony's going to demonstrate here. She's going to gently pull. She's just gently pulling on her head, stretching out the upper trapezius muscle. She's extending her arm to increase the stretch. By changing the angle of her head, we can change the muscles that are getting stretched. If she pulls back a little bit and to the side, it's going to access the anterior scalene muscles. And I'm sure she can feel a really good stretch right there. Now to access the SCM muscle, she can go a little bit forward and down to the side, going in this direction, and that will help access parts of the SCM muscle. All three of these muscles are very helpful to lengthen to take the pressure off that head coming forward. The last group of muscles that we really want to focus on stretching or lengthening is the pectoral muscles. The pectoral muscles become the cause of what rounds those shoulders. And we need to help externally rotate the shoulders and stretch out those pecs. Ms. Tony is going to face me. She's going to demonstrate a pec stretch by keeping her head level. She's going to place her hands behind her back. She's going to try to touch her palms so the palms actually touch together back here. This helps keep the shoulders in a great alignment. Now, from this position, she's going to take her sternum and she's going to lift it up. And that's all she really needs to do. As she lifts it up, the shoulders actually externally rotate, the scapula retracts, 
And this puts the shoulders in a really good position without over accentuating any pull on the shoulders going in the other direction. Another effective way to stretch the pectoral muscles is to utilize a door jam. Ms. Tony is going to put her arms up in a perpendicular position and she's just going to uh, brace herself with her elbows along the door jam as she gently walks through, keeping her head level. Now she's just going to take her sternum and she's going to lift up on her sternum. This will help gently externally rotate the shoulders and stretch the pectorals while squeezing a little bit here in the scapular retractors. This is a very effective alternative to doing the other pectoral stretch where she was reaching from behind. To help strengthen the muscles that became weak for upper cross syndrome, we want to focus on two major exercises. We want to focus on neck retraction exercises to strengthen the deep neck flexors, and then we want to focus on scapular retraction exercises to focus on strengthening the rhomboids and the lower trapezius. The chin tuck exercise is excellent to help strengthen the deep neck flexors as well as help loosen up that suboccipital. We showed this to you a little bit earlier, but Miss Tony's going to review this again. Again, she's just going to keep her head level. She's going to do half the chicken dance, just bringing the head straight back and then just coming forward. Head back and then coming straight forward. This will help strengthen those deep neck flexors and help hold the head back. The other group of exercises that we really need to focus on and strengthen is the scapular retraction exercises. This focuses on the lower trapezius and the rhomboids. Ms. Tony is lying on a foam roller here. This helps get her in the proper position. And we're going to use a foam roller, which you can probably get at Sports Authority, Walmart, or Target for approximately $25. We're going to give Miss Tony a green TheraBand. You can get this at varying thicknesses and tension. This one's a uh, moderate to heavy tension. We're going to double it up to increase the tension. Miss Tony is just going to hold this straight over her head with the arms straight and we're going to focus on squeezing the shoulder blades together. The action of this is she's going to take her elbows and drive them straight back and she wants to finish with a pinch between her shoulder blades, pinching that foam roller right between her shoulder blades. We're going to focus on doing this in an eccentric contraction. That means doing this in a negative set. What that really means is she's going to go down for two seconds and then when she comes back up, she's going to take four seconds. She's going to take twice as long going back up as she does when she first contracts the muscle. This will help lengthen the muscles as well as strengthen the muscles and get them in the proper position that they need to be in. A great scapular retraction exercise that helps access the lower trapezius is doing a scapular retraction from overhead. We've got a TheraBand attached to the top of the door here. Ms. Tony's going to turn around. She's just going to grab the TheraBand. And she really wants to focus on squeezing her shoulder blades together here. She's going to drive with her elbows. She's going to come down at an angle. And she wants to pinch her shoulder blades right down in this area right in here. This will help squeeze the shoulder blades, help flatten out the shoulders, strengthen the rhomboids, and strengthen the lower trapezius, and again, we're doing an eccentric contraction. She's taking two seconds to come out and taking four seconds to come back, creating that negative set. Here, you can see her shoulders pinched together. So there you have it. These are the stretches and the strengthening exercises to help upper back pain associated with upper cross syndrome. I want to thank Ms. Tony Klein. Thank you so much, Tony, for helping me demonstrate these exercises today. And we want to ask you to tune in next week and make it a great day.